Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you. Um, this is something new that we're doing tonight, not a new webinar, but you're going to get to see Beth and I. We thought it might be a little bit more personable if you get to see us talking and working behind the scenes. So you see Beth up there in the corner and you see me. Um, our webinar tonight is Meal Time is Learning Time. We have quite a few people already signed in and we just know, I know more people sign in as they get the children out the door and they get ready for the evening. But we do want to thank you for giving us this time tonight to share this training with you. Um, and the topic is meal time is learning time and we hope that you walk away or leave tonight with something you can use tomorrow in your classroom. Um, I will let you know and you'll get a follow-up email right after the webinar is over because so, a couple of people have already asked about the certificate. Now, if you're with the PA register, Beth's going to explain that to you. But if you just need a certificate of attendance, after the webinar is over with, um, you will there will be a link on our page and Beth's going to show it to you and you will need to complete a post assessment then a link will be sent for that certificate and it explains it in the email that will come to you about an hour after the webinar is over. Um, another thing that I want to share with you hopefully up in the right hand corner of your screen you see a go to webinar control panel. If you expand that little box uh, you will see a little box a question box. We're going to do hopefully a lot of interaction tonight. So if you have questions as we're conducting the webinar tonight, just type them in there. There'll be times when Beth's going to ask you your opinion about things. And we have not been real successful unmuting people. Plus, we have so many people on here tonight. We're going to try to read the responses that you send as many as we can. But please, we will share the um, responses after the webinar. Um, but Beth's going to do the training tonight, and we just, again want to thank you all for joining us, and I'm going to turn it over to Beth. Good evening, everybody. I have to remember that I'm on a webcam, <laughs> so hopefully nothing crazy will happen behind me. Um, as Sherry said, this is Meal Time is Learning Time, and my goal for you at the end of this is that you will walk away from this webinar with ideas that you can implement tomorrow. Um, there will be lots of interaction. As Sherry said, we're going to use the question box where you're going to type in your ideas. Sherry's going to read off a lot of those ideas. We do have a lot of people on the webinar, so if we don't read yours, it doesn't mean that we didn't like what you had to say. It just means we ran out of time. Um, but we will try to share as many as we possibly can. There will also be time for questions and answers at the end. And as Sherry said, yes, we will show you, or I will show you, where you're going to go to get the link to the post assessment that you must complete in order to get the access to the certificate of attendance. And if you are in the PD registry in Pennsylvania, you will need to complete that post assessment in order for me to give you credit in the registry as attending the webinar. If something happens and you need to leave um, before we're done, we will, we are recording this and we will post it on our website. I will show you where it will be. So you can always go back, you can review, you can pick up where you left off. So, so don't worry about that. Same thing with the handouts that are to the right. Those are also available on our website and I will show you where they are. So if you don't wanna download them now, you can't download them now, no biggie. I will show you where they are on our website um, and you can get them at a later time. Okay, so with that said, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start with a really simple question. Um, I want to test the question box to see if everybody can find the question box and is able to type in your ideas and your answers. Um, so this is a simple question. What meals do you serve in your program? Do you serve breakfast? Do you serve lunch? Do you serve snacks? Do you serve dinner? So find that question box in the GoToWebinar toolbar and just type in a list of the meals you serve in your program. And um, Sherry's going to read a couple of those off, but I really am doing this just so you can practice using that question box. And the responses were coming in before you finish. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and snack. I serve all of them. Breakfast, lunch, and PM snacks. Bre a lot of breakfast, lunch, a lot of snacks. Um, I see no dinner, but a lot of breakfast, lunch, and snacks is what Excellent. we're getting. Well, Excellent. There's one or two dinners, but not. But that's it. So. Well, this was just a test to make sure you knew where the question box was, because we're going to be using that, as Sherry said, and I said uh, quite a bit throughout this webinar. So great. And the point being here, too, also is that as a provider, 
there are numerous opportunities during meal times for you to promote learning in many different areas and that's what we're going to focus on here we're going to focus on how you can turn meal time which is a routine time that you all do every single day into a learning time where you can reinforce skills across all 10 developmental areas with all ages um, so hopefully you'll walk away with a lot of knowledge and skills you can use tomorrow so learning through meal time how do meals and snacks open the door for learning well there's a lot of different ways um, first and foremost they provide an opportunity for you to ask open-ended questions we do an entire webinar on open-ended questions, but an open-ended question is a question that does not necessarily have a right or wrong answer. Um, usually it starts with a word like how or why, um, you know, why do you think peas are round, for instance, right? That's an open-ended question. Is there a right or wrong answer to that? Uh, not really. We, we have some ideas, adults, behind the science of peas, but, you know, who knows what a child might say. So open-ended questions, especially if you're doing family-style dining. Um, a lot of you do family-style dining, and so if you're dining with the children and engaging with them and asking open-ended questions, it provides the opportunity for you to build skills in many areas. Um, it creates an environment where children can learn from each other. You're going to have children, especially if you're a family child care provider, you might have children who are four or five or even school age, and then you may have infants. And so your children who are more verbal and who are engaging with you in the open-ended questions are providing an environment where they can help those who are nonverbal verbal learn, learn receptive language skills, right? But they also learn from each other on many different levels. We're going to talk about that not everybody likes the same foods right some people love carrots other people do not like carrots um, some people eat meat others do not eat meat so mealtime provides an opportunity to explore diversity it provides an opportunity to explore different cultures it's just an environment where they can learn um, and that ties in with the language and listening skills as others share their ideas, right? You learn also manners about when you should, you know, listening and when someone else is speaking, you listen. Uh, there's so many different things that you learn through meal times. And it does open the door for intentional learning across many of the different developmental areas, in fact, all of them, if you just take a little bit of time to think about it. And that's what we're going to talk about too. We're going to talk about like the foods you serve. Okay, how does this food tie in with, say, math or science or social studies, for instance? Um, so all of those things. So we talk about the 10 developmental areas, and there are many different, different states have different ways of breaking this down, but these are the 10 that at, at GWIS we focus on, which are language development, which encompasses things like listening and speaking, engaging with others, literacy knowledge, which encompasses uh, knowledge about print, books, uh, letter sounds, writing, uh, the reason that people use written text to communicate ideas, all of that falls under literacy. Math knowledge is exactly what you would think it would be. It would be counting shapes, positional concepts, um, grouping, sorting, patterning, size, all of those things fall under math. Science is um, learning about the world, obviously, all the different um, nature and all of the different aspects of the world, but also like predicting and um, planning out like an experiment to test ideas using your senses, all of that. Approaches to learning, trying new things, demonstrating patience and persistence, cooperating with others, logic and reasoning is problem solving, Create, creative arts encompasses things like fine art, like drawing, it also inc includes dramatic play and creative movement, all of those things fall under creative arts and music. Social studies, differences in families, learning about my community, taking care of the environment, history, social and emotional, engaging with others, self-regulation would fall under there as well, and then of course physical development and health, which you all know. So when you think about the 10 developmental areas and you look at all of these, you're, you truly can reinforce all of these areas during mealtimes. And we're gonna practice doing that during this webinar so that when you, you know, are serving your meal times or snacks tomorrow, you're ready. You you are ready to and to reinforce skills in many, many different areas. 
So here I have a picture of children in, enjoying what appears to be a snack. And as best as I can tell, and we're just going to make this assumption, they're having orange slices. They also have round crackers. They have some pretzel sticks. And they have what looks to be, to me, um, small pieces of a whole grain bread. Okay, so we're going to assume that it's orange slices, slices of whole grain bread, pretzel sticks, and round crackers. So now you get to use your question box. Given that we just talked about those 10 developmental areas, we're not going to really focus on the area particularly right now, but just in your opinion, in your professional opinion as an educator, what skills do you see these children developing? You can type your ideas in the question box and then Sherry, like I said, she's going to do her best to read as many of them as we can, um, but if we don't get to yours, there's going to be more time to share. So I'll let Sherry read off some of your responses and it could be skills in any area, whatever you think they might be developing or you could reinforce while they're enjoying this snack, you can type that in the question box. Okay, here we go. Um, social, communication and group awareness, sharing communication, um, fine motor skill, math, math and language, uh, shapes and color, shapes and color, um, fine motor social skills, sorting and counting, math and literacy, so if I see a double, I'm not going to read it again. Um, sure. Table manners, uh, math, knowledge of shapes, uh, definitely social skills and emotion, language, uh, sharing and taking turns, math knowledge, um, let's see, uh, counting, uh, safety, uh, learning to try new things, cognitive by uh, making ch uh, choices, um, listening, very good, small motor skills, and uh, now we're getting into some repeats, but still, art, making pictures with the food shapes, sharing, um, I think they're learning in every area, <laughs> self-serving, one-to-one -one correspondence, math, language, color, shapes, and, and social skills, so, fruits or vegetables, what is this, fruit or vegetable, very good, different flavors, okay. Thank you. Those are great. Awesome. Yes, the whole point of this is that, as you can tell by the responses that are coming in and are probably continuing to come in, there are many, many different skills that you can you can focus on during a snack time, which you do every single day. Some, some most of you probably twice a day. So here's what I came up with when I thought about them enjoying the snack. Language development. If you're engaging with them, they can describe the flavors and textures of the foods as well as naming them. And we talked earlier about the, the older children modeling for the younger children. This is a perfect example. So, you know, a four-year-old is going to know what an orange is, but a toddler who's not yet verbal may know what an orange is, but doesn't say the word yet, but they're going to hear that word used in context and that will help them learn too. Literacy. You could add a menu using pictures and the words for what's being served during your snack, during your lunch, so the children can see in print what the word orange looks like, and then you have the picture of the orange. And you could do it like a restaurant, right? The menu for today is, and then you have the picture. It's basically a picture menu. Your more advanced children, let's say you have school-age children, that would be a great project for them to do the day before you serve the snack. They can create the menus for you, and then they get to practice writing and drawing, and you build their skills as well. Um, someone mentioned approaches to learning, which was being willing to try new foods. That's a big deal. I mean, it takes, I think they said on average, at least four times when you offer a child um, a food, a new food, for them to even taste it. Um, and so you just have to be persistent with that one. And then some may taste it and, and not like it, and that's okay. And some may just never want to taste it. But just, just know it does take a while. Um, logic and reasoning. How do I, how do I pass the plate so the oranges don't fall off? I mean, that's a skill, right? How do you pass a plate that has food on it so it doesn't fall off? I'm not always so successful with that. <laughs> a lot of times my food does fall off. Um, but that's an example of logic and reasoning. They must problem solve. 
Um, math, someone mentioned this, counting the number of crackers taken and also the shape of the crackers. Then you can take it a step further and you can ask an open-ended question like, well, what other foods can you think of that are shaped like a circle, like this cracker? And again, you're engaging with them by asking those kinds of questions. Science, they can use their senses to describe the food. How does it taste? How does it smell? What kind of texture does it have? All of those are great also for building language because they're using more robust language when they describe those things. Um, and also talking about how they grow. Where do oranges grow? Do oranges grow on a tree? Do they grow under the ground? Where do they come from? How do they get from you know, the grocery store to our house, how do they get to the grocery store? Um, and that ties in with the social studies. Where do you think I bought these foods? And that's gonna be an interesting question to ask because not all families buy foods at the same place. So that again, opens the door for diversity. Um, creative arts, talking about the colors and the patterns that you see in the foods. And you know, what kind of patterns do you see in an orange? Social and emotional, someone mentioned about manners and passing the food from person to person and engaging in conversations where, where they're doing back and forth and also the self-confidence for children to share if they like or they don't like something in a polite way. Um, and then physical development. Fine motor skills are obviously involved in picking up and eating the food. The conversation about eating healthy foods, right? Why are oranges a healthy food? What is it about them that makes them a healthy food? And then somebody mentioned safety, right? Always chewing and swallowing food before talking. Um, so those are just some examples that I came up with for this one snack time that the children were having with the different foods. So great. All right, let's keep going. So let's try it again. This time, the children are eating pancakes with apple slices. So again, thinking back to all the different skills they could develop and the different areas that they fall under, what skills do you believe these children are developing as they enjoy pancakes with apples? Sherry, are you unmuted? Because if you are, I can't hear I you. I am. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm just reading them off. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Okay. Fine motor, uh, texture, independence, um, fine motor, cutting the pancakes. Um, let's see. Shapes, uh, comparing and contrasting the shapes, learning to use the silverware, um, a lot of fine motor with cutting, social skills, hand eye coordination counting, gross motor, uh, shapes and manners, safety, definitely, beginning alphabet sound of the foods that begin with the things they're eating, um, counting, social skills, fine motor, texture, shapes, all of them, um, sizes, how do we get the right size for your mouth? That's a good one. That is a Math. good, and that ties in with safety too, right? Yeah. Not taking yeah. too big of a bite. Great. That's a great one. Um, Sorting and learning about what others like to eat. Uh, language conversation with problem solving to cut. Uh, fine motor, uh, cutting, sensory, hand-eye coordination. Uh, predicting who will get done first. All the five senses, art and designing with the food and fine motor. Those are all good. Excellent. All right, let's keep moving. All right, so the foods that you serve can promote learning in many different areas. So here's something that you probably all have served at one point or another, mixed vegetables, right? Mixed vegetables are a great food because they open the door to talk about new vocabulary, obviously naming all the different foods that are, or all the different vegetables that are part of mixed vegetables, colors, textures, shapes, and in fact, with shapes, you can get into three-dimensional shapes because oftentimes with mixed vegetables, the carrots are the shape of a cube and obviously the peas are a sphere. So you can get into three-dimensional shapes. And that may sound like that's way above, you know, a two-year-old, three-year-old, but, but if you expose them to that word in context and you're simply talking about that shape, for instance, that a pea is a sphere, they will begin to learn that it is in fact a sphere and not a circle, because it's not a circle, it is a sphere. Just like a ball is a sphere, not a circle. And so if you use it the right way from the time they are very little, they will learn that is that is what it is called. Um, sorting and grouping, if you put these on the plate, you could sort them by the type of food, you could sort them by color. 
Um, they could count how many pieces of corn, how many pieces of carrot, how many green beans, how many lima beans. For those that are, are ready and are more advanced, you could do addition and subtraction. Okay, you have eight peas on your plate. What happens if you eat four? How many do you have left? Talk about likes and dislikes. You know, they could sort them based on which ones they like, which ones they don't like, and then compare and contrast. The flavors, right? A carrot a co and corn have somewhat of a sweet taste to them, but a, a green bean does not. Well, why is that? And size, they could lay their green beans side by side and compare, okay, which one is the shortest green bean? Which one is the longest green bean? Um, what other skills do you think you could reinforce with besides the ones listed on the slide? Do you think that you could reinforce if you were ex serving um, mixed vegetables with your children? Anybody have any other ideas? I'm unmuted now. The reason I'm mute is I have a dog and if he starts barking, I don't want to drive y'all crazy. Um, all right, we just got some. Um, patterning. Excellent idea, yes, patterning, very good. Um, different textures and cutting with the teacher's help. Um, okay, oh, here we go. Now, okay, I'm sorry, this person was not seeing the slides. Uh, sorting colors and shape, predicting how many in a spoonful, that's good. Ah, excellent, um, yes. Sorting with colors, uh, sorting colors and shape, okay. Good. Slow down just a little. Here we go. Science and how they're grown. Um, shapes, which I know we talk. Oh, here we go. We like to see what is inside the vegetable. Ah, that's great. Yes, because especially, well, that would be interesting, right? Because you take the the outside of a, off of a pea or the outside of a green bean, it's gonna you are gonna find something inside. But if you cut inside a carrot, it's pretty much gonna look like the outside. So that's a really good yeah. idea. Talk about which ones they like better. I talk about trying new foods. Pick out what they don't like and how many they do like. Mm -hmm. um, learning where food comes from. Which ones are soft and which ones are hard. That's a good one too. Yep. Is a spoon or a fork easier to eat with? That's, ah, good. That's a good question. That is talk a good about, question. <laughs> talk about which veggies grow above the ground and which grow below the ground. Excellent. Um, grown on top of the ground. This, uh, what grows above the ground, what grows below. Social mm -hmm. studies, the environment and where they're grown. And charting, mm -hmm. Char I guess, like the different yes. colors. Yep, excellent, what, excellent. What's juicy, that's it. <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, the whole point of this is honestly that, you know, they're, you're taking something very simple, mixed vegetables, which you can, I'm sure you've served, you can serve again, but now when you serve them the next time, you have some really great ideas of all the different things that you can reinforce in, in the de developmental areas as the children enjoy their um, mixed vegetables. Great. All right. So now you get to pick. So now you get to pick which one, fruit salad in this upper corner. This is a pasta salad. It's a, like a, a penne noodle with carrots and broccoli and yellow squash. This is a stir fry with uh, rice noodles, broccoli, looks to be probably either beef or pork. Um, looks like there's some red pepper in there. There's limes. Um, it's making me hungry just looking at it. And then we have the fruit and yogurt parfait. Um, if you printed out the notes handout, I had the, the different developmental areas there, like, you know, math knowledge, science knowledge, social studies, so you can utilize that to write your notes on. But what I want you to do is I want you to pick one of these foods, your choice, and um, when you type in the question box, just type what food you've chosen, like fruit parfait and list you know two or three different skills you could reinforce by serving that particular food okay same thing with the fruit salad and the pasta salad and the stir fry so we just kind of need to know when you're sharing like which one it is and the main skills that you would want to reinforce or you would try to reinforce keeping in mind that with any one of these you could truly reinforce all 10 developmental areas. Um, but if all of you typed all 10, we would be here all night. <laughs> so so we're gonna just limit to two or you know two or three. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, which is better for you? It, it's just a question, I guess, if you were to ask about which of the foods. And okay, fruit salad, color, sorting, size, and shapes. Fruit Great. parfait, solid or liquid. The penny oh, pasta. That's good. Yeah. With the penny pasta, shapes, textures, and colors. Mm -hmm. Stir fry. What food groups are represented? Four of the five. And which letter sounds do they begin with? Uh, penny pasta with different texture, colors, and shapes. Let's see. Um, yogurt and fruit. Texture. They talk about texture, colors, and what part tastes better. Uh, the fruit salad, sorting and coloring, sorting and colors. Um, stir fry. What country would like eating this, and what vegetables can you find? The parfait. Patterning, colors, solids and liquids, shapes, hard and soft. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes that fruit parfait. Um, fruit salad, uh, sorting colors and talking about where they're grown. Um, stir fry, we talk about shapes, what colors, which do you like best? Um, a lot of good answers and I'm trying to get, oh, fruit salad, is it talk about color, sour, sweet and textures? Um, and let's see. Trying each fruit texture, shapes, and so I'm trying to look for something a little bit different. But we will, Beth does a real good job of getting all these and putting them in a spreadsheet for you. Uh, stir fry, senses, colors, and shapes. Pasta salad. L love that it do does it grow above or below the ground language with math. Stir fry. How long are the how, stir fry. How long are the noodles? Uh, how long are the noodles? Oh, Sometimes yeah. really long. <laughs> okay. And with the penny pasta, how does the vegetable grow? If you watch the commercials, you'd think the pasta grows on trees sometimes. So I'm just kidding. That used to be a commercial a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, they grew spaghetti on trees, I think it yeah. was. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people thought that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Layering and portioning. Have the kiddos make their own parfait. Okay. Yep, absolutely. All right. Um, fruit, uh, shape, sizes, and health facts. All of those are good. Excellent. Uh, good. Thank you. All right, so what I want you to do now as you look at these four, besides getting hungry, um, as you look at these four pictures of foods, you can see very quickly in listening to the responses, which were great responses, that we have a lot of certain areas, right? And there's other areas that are part of the areas of development that maybe we didn't touch on quite as much. So what I want you to think about right now is, for instance, let's just talk about problem solving, which falls under logic and reasoning. Okay. How could you utilize any of these dishes, whether it be fruit salad, pasta salad, whatever, to reinforce the skill of problem solving? Let's get the let's get that screen up so I can read your responses. And I'll give you I'll give you one. I'll give you one to get you started. So fruit salad, right? In a fruit salad, you have all these different fruits. And somebody brought this up earlier about which works better, a spoon or a fork. That's problem solving. So if you were eating your fruit salad, which would work better, a fork or a spoon? The answer might be both, because when you're eating, for instance, the or your fingers even, um, you're eating honeydew, let's say, it would be easier to get it with a fork. But if you're eating a grape, it might be easier to pick it up with a spoon. So that's problem solving. So let's see what you come up with for all the different foods that are on here. Um, there's some good ones. Pasta, how is the pasta made? Um, colors, have you had any of these vegetables in other foods? I'm thinking they're talking about, are there certain colors that you have in one food that you have exactly. in another food? Yep. What do we need to eat this with, which was what you were talking about, mm -hmm. Beth, what utensil would be better? Um, problem solving, having them serve themselves family style. How would they go about doing that? Um, what, e what foods are easy to poke into your, onto your fork or scoop with the spoon? Um, what would it taste like if we added some seasoning or too much ah. seasoning sometimes? Um, <laughs> Depending on the age of the child, spoon or fork, if a child doesn't like part of something, learning how to pick out the foods they do like. Pasta salad, what can you do if you don't like broccoli? 
That would be a problem solving with the ones that don't. Yes, yes um, exactly. What do you do if your food is too hot or cold to eat? Ah, very good. Yep. With the fruit salad, which grows on a tree or which grows on a bush, mm -hmm. um, whether to cut, whether to bite or cut fruit bite sizes. Um, what other foods would be good to go with this? Does your family eat this at home? There you go. Very good. Uh, Tying in some social studies too. Uh, how do you decide which to eat first or last? I know what my kids are down there going right after the fruit salad. Um, in the parfait, would you put the would you put in the cup first the granola or the yogurt? Um, and there's really no right or wrong. It's just what do you? Right. And then you can expand extend that a little bit more and say why did you make that choice? And then they uh, can explain their thinking to you. Uh, my little one is watching and said, how do you get that pepper off that pasta? <laughs> <laughs> that um, is problem solving. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what kind of pasta shapes do you like or do they all taste the same? Um, I have a funny story about that. My children were convinced when they were little that the SpongeBob mac and cheese tasted totally different than the regular mac and cheese. Of course, <laughs> of course. Or or the dinosaur mac and cheese is yes. going to taste different than yes. you know homemade mac and cheese. Um, what fruits do you like, and why do you like them? Those are all great answers. Excellent, Thank you. excellent. And that's the that's the point. And and as we do a little bit more of this, I'm going to push you to think of the think of the areas that maybe you don't automatically go to, like sorting by colors or sorting by size or whatever. Push yourself to go beyond that because you are already well established in how to reinforce the skills that come to mind like that. It's the ones you have to think a little bit more about that are really important as well. Excellent. You guys did a great job. Okay, so it's not just mealtime, but it's getting ready for mealtime that matters too. And somebody brought up one-to-one -one correspondence. That is very true. When you're setting the table and you're putting a plate at each seat or a fork or a spoon or whatever, you're practicing one-to-one -one correspondence. Um, so that's something that, that children can help do. Um, counting. So before you even get ready for mealtime, how many children are going to be eating today? How many plates do we need? How many cups do we need? How many napkins do we need? Um, speaking of napkins, fine motor. Children can help fold the napkins. They can arrange the silverware. Um, for creative arts, they can even create placemats which you can laminate and then use over and over and over again. And you can put their name on the placemat or if they're, or if they're developmentally ready, they can write their own name before you laminate it. And then when you put the placemats out, they need to find their name and know where they're gonna sit. So maybe they don't always sit in the same place. Maybe every day you have to look at your place, figure out where your placemat is. That way too, you can mix your group up and seat children next to each other that might not otherwise sit next to each other. Um, predicting, show the children food before you cook it, like the pasta, and then have them predict how it's going to change once it's cooked. So it's not just the time that is part of eating, it is also the pre preparing to eat as well that counts. And we talked a little bit about diversity. Somebody just brought this up. You know, is this a, is this a food that your family enjoys eating at home? Um, that's a great question to ask, and it opens up the door for a lot of conversation because the goal is to help the children see that, okay, at my house, I eat, you know, penne pasta, but maybe someone else at their house has never had that shape of pasta, or maybe they just don't eat pasta. Maybe someone has a gluten allergy, and so that's just not something that is served. And that's okay, to help them realize it's okay. We all eat different things, we all enjoy different things. That also ties in with foods associated with different cultures. It's important to know the cultural background of the families in your group, because you can incorporate those into mealtimes as well. Um, and, and it's wonderful for children to see a food that maybe they enjoy eating at home, served at school, so that it opens a door to other children who may not have been ever been exposed to that food. Um, the tools that different cultures use when they are eating and how and when meals are served. You know, there are many different types of tools 
that people around the world you utilize when eating and just different ways they utilize the same tools but for instance chopsticks right that's a tricky thing to learn to use I'm still not proficient at chopsticks um, and then there are other cultures that utilize their hands that is appropriate to utilize your hands when eating and so the children in your group and your cultures it's important to incorporate that into your meal time and then the last one is just simply likes and dislikes. That's what makes the world go round, right? We all like different things. Um, and, and, and our likes and dislikes change as we, as we get older. Um, I hated, absolutely hated beets when I was little. My mom said she would try to feed me them when I was a baby. I would spit them out as fast as she put them in. And now I love roasted beets. So things change and, and talking about that. Like maybe there was something children didn't like when they were little and now they like it better or maybe they liked it when they're little and they don't like it now. All of those things provide an opportunity to talk about likenesses and differences between all of us and how that makes us all special and all unique. So just keeping that in mind as you're planning your meals. Mealtime is also an amazing time for social and emotional growth. Uh, it opens the door for so much, especially with back and forth conversations, being respectful of others' ideas, of their likes, of their dislikes. It op opens the door for you to talk about manners and why it's, what, what manners are, why they're important, accepting others' cultural preferences and their foods. Um, self-regulation. There's a lot of self-regulation that takes place at mealtime. What is okay? What is not okay? Cooperating, even something like passing the, the container of, of crackers or whatever. Uh, personal decision making, you know, especially if you're giving children a choice. Do you want to have um, Ritz crackers or do you want to have Triscuits, right? Like you have a choice, you know, which would you like? Um, interacting with adults and peers, and then of course self-concept and self-confidence because all these other things that are going on right here. So a lot of social and emotional going on during meal times that you can reinforce. And we touched on this about asking questions to engage in conversation. Um, we, like I said, there's a whole entire webinar we do about open-ended questions, but just keeping in mind that when you ask open-ended questions, you're opening the door to a back and forth conversation. So think about an open-ended question as something that you can't simply answer with one, a one word question or a one word answer, I'm sorry. Um, but you need that, and and there may be no right or wrong. So, for instance, this, which food do you like best, is not an open-ended question. But the second part of it is, why do you like that one? There's no right or wrong. They're gonna talk for a while, maybe, about why they like that one or they don't like that one. So it's open-ended. Um, and then things like, how do you think I prepared the, let's say, pasta salad? to hear what they have to say. It's, it's actually quite entertaining, usually what they have to say. Um, if you were gonna cook lunch for us, what would you prepare? What types of foods do you eat for dinner at your house? You could expand upon that and say, you know, um, how does your mother, father, grandmother, aunt, you will know the family, but how do they prepare, how do you think they prepare that particular food? And what is your favorite meal? So what open-ended questions can you think of that you could ask when you're engaging with children as they enjoy meal times, whether it be breakfast, snack, lunch, whatever, what kind of open-ended question could you ask to get the conversation going as you're engaging with the children? You can share that in the question box and Cheryl will read some of those off for us. I do want to share with you, up at the very top of your screen, I just discovered this, so I thought I would share it with you. There's four little icons. You see a little box with like silhouettes in it and you see like a camera and a plus and a, uh, if you want to make your screen bigger on the slides and cut Beth and I out, which I totally understand, it might be easier. If you click up there and put hide the, the video, then the slideshow becomes bigger. So just to let you know, so and we don't know what you do, it doesn't, we don't care, but it might be easier for you to see your screen. Good to know uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I just discovered that. We're um, learning with you all this time. <laughs> um, I always ask the child to take a no thank you bite before they say, I don't like it. Um, how do you prepare a meal? What on your dish is the food with the most vitamins? Oh, that's a good question. What is your mom or dad's favorite food? Why don't you like that certain? Why don't you like that certain food? 
Um, what other foods would be good to eat with this, whatever you're serving? Yeah. Um, where do, where can we buy this fruit and where do you shop? And that's going to uh, open up the door to, you know, a lot of discussions about how we don't all shop at the same place. This is a good one. If your favorite animal ate lunch with us, what would they be eating? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that one. That's great. Good one. Do you eat this at home? Um, what do you think we're having for lunch today? Um, we try to eat a little bit with the children. Let's see, where's your favorite food? What made you pick that first to eat? Does it taste different at your home and why? That's a good question because people cook differently. Exactly. Um, do you help prepare meals at home? And what is your favorite food? What is your favorite time to eat during the day? That's a good what, question. Yeah, what ingredients do we need to get out to cook? whatever we're getting ready to cook. Excellent. What colors, what colors do you see? And what is your family's favorite meal time? Those are all good. Thank you. Those are good. Excellent. Someone Excellent. did cut us off and said it's much better they can see the screen. I'm glad. So this is something new. We've never tried this. So glad to hear that. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, the point here is that as you're engaging with children, it's so important to ask questions that open the door for a conversation because you just never know where that conversation is going to go or what activities and learning that might then lead to. And so asking the questions is super important. So as you're as you're eating with the children, as you're I love the question about what do you think we're going to be having for lunch, especially if you've started cooking already and they can smell something, but they can't see it. Um, those are the kind of questions that really get the conversation going. So you guys did a great job. All right, awesome. All right, so it doesn't stop there. Um, after, after you eat, it keeps on going. So when children are washing their hands after they've eaten, brushing their teeth after they've eaten, they're obviously learning self-help skills. When they help clear off the table, when they help clean off the floor, when they pick up anything they've dropped, they're learning responsibility. Obviously, fine motor falls in un, under both of those and taking care of themselves, you know, taking good health practices. Why is it important to brush your teeth after you eat? Why is it important to help clean up? What, what would happen if we left the food on the floor, you know, and we didn't clean it up? So all of that is just another way that you can continue learning even after mealtime is over. Um, it's really, really important to look at the mealtime as a big picture event. And, eat, and like I said, it's happening every day. So every day you have the ability to reinforce these skills. All right, so we're going to test what you've learned so far. So. I have a picture here of two little people eating spaghetti with mixed vegetables, and I've listed out the 10 developmental areas for you on this slide. Again, if you have the handout and you're working from that, you should also have a place that you can write. But I'm going to challenge you to try to address all of these um, areas as you look at this picture. So how are they going to develop language? How are they going to develop literacy? How could you develop math? And if you're working from a handout, you can jot down on the handout, um, challenge yourself to try to come up with a way that they can address each one of these different areas. If you're not working from a handout, that is perfectly fine. What I would encourage you to do is pick the three that you find that you, as you look at the list, you're like, hmm, that's going to be a tough one, right? Like you might go math, that's easy. You might go science, that's easy. Hmm, creative arts, that's a little harder. So what I would like you to do is push yourself here. If you have the handout, try to do all 10. If you don't have the handout, then just pick three, but three that you think would be more challenging for you to address. Um, take your time. There's no rush. Uh, and then you can type in your ideas in the question box. Those of you working from a handout, just again, type in, you know, two, two, two things or one thing, doesn't really matter, but um, not all 10, obviously. Again, we, we all don't want to be here all night, <laughs> but push yourself. So push yourself to find an area that maybe you wouldn't do right away, that doesn't come to you immediately, and let's see what we can come up with. Okay. 
Um, so we have a couple of responses. Um, when I can, I ask the children if they would prefer a cooked vegetable or a raw vegetable. Um, learning to say spaghetti correctly and count how many noodles you can fit in your mouth. How can we eat this without using your hands, holding a fork correctly to spin the pasta? Logic and reasoning with this, will this meal be messy? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, let's see. Slow on this one. We, well, those one. are the try and do all 10. They may be out there thinking. Oh, yeah. How many bites will it take to eat all of your veggies? What are the other names for? Hold on one second. What are the other names for spaghetti? Noodles, pasta. What do you like on your pasta? Approaches to learning, fork or spoon, or even shove fork and spoon together. Um, what do you have in the room that are the same colors as your vegetables? Creative mm. art, pasta painting. How do you wrap <laughs> the noodles on your fork? Science knowledge, how you cook that food. How many noodles do you think you have? Creative arts. Have you ever painted with noodles? Make a face with the meatballs. Where does pasta come from and how is it made? Social studies. Where does the spaghetti come from and do you make it? How much can you fit in your mouth? Colors of vegetable <laughs> sizes or sizes of spaghetti. Um, what color of the vegetables and the pasta? And will you try any of the green vegetables today? Is it hot or cold? How many noodles do you have? Math knowledge, how many forkfuls until your bowl is empty, which is language development. And then what do you call your pasta? Science knowledge, how do you make pasta? Literacy, show pasta box and ask if the same or different as the pasta used at home. Logic That's great. And yeah, logic and reasoning. Which way is easiest to eat the pasta? Spin, cut, use hands, use hands language, and discuss ways to eat pasta. What else goes into the pasta dish? Language development. The spaghetti keeps falling off my fork. Um, how many times do you chew before you swallow? Um, oh. Let's see, science, That's talk good. about cold, hot, and warm when you're serving food. Um, talk about how you make spaghetti and how do you know when it's ready. <laughs> um, social and emotional, do you like the pasta or the vegetables better? Science knowledge, the pasta started out hard, but when it cooked, it became soft. Maybe ask them why they think that happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Health, what part of your body are carrots, peas, etc.? What are they good for? Um, who can eat the orange vegetables first? Uh, let's see, math, measuring science, oh, my screen, science, how is pasta made and with, and compare it to your, or talk about your senses. How many napkins do you think you will need during this meal? <laughs> Me, it would be a lot. Plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, science, how does the noodles fill in your hands? Do you like your pastas hot or cold? And social studies, which restaurants have you seen them serve pasta? Excellent. Some children think the boy next to them has better tasting food. Eat what's on your own plate. Probably eating the same <laughs> thing and they still think it's better. Uh, language. Can you make a song with this meal? That's a good one. Yeah, those are all good. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I think what you're seeing is that if you think a little bit more beyond the easy, that you can truly address all 10 developmental areas during any mealtime, whether it's a snack, whether it's a lunch. Um, and then another piece of this that, that can tie into mealtime is technology. And I say that because a lot of you talked about how a spaghetti made. Well, there is a right way and a wrong way to use technology with children. And to help them learn about something like how pasta is made is the right way. 
um, let's face it, we are not going to be going to the pasta factory and watching Barilla make spaghetti. Well, at least I'm not and probably not taking children there either. But there are videos that are designed for children that they can watch that will help them learn about exactly how pasta is made. I mean, you could actually make pasta, you know, make the dough. And if you knew somebody that had a pasta machine, you could make pasta with homemade pasta with the children. So the, the point here is that that you think a little bit just beyond the easy, like let's sort the carrots and things by color and get into more of the deep learning that can take place, which can then extend beyond mealtime and into other things. Great job. All right, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna see, I'm gonna stop um, because we've gotten to the end of the PowerPoint part of this and I want to ask if there are any questions about anything we covered during the PowerPoint presentation regarding the concepts that we went over and at this point for questions we're going to try to unmute you so if you would like to ask a question out loud um, there's a way you can click a button to raise your hand now I will say it works best if you're using a headset it will work if you've chosen computer audio and speakers and you have a microphone as part of your laptop or your PC or your uh, Mac, um, or if you're on your phone. Uh, we're willing to give it a try. Sometimes this works out well, sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> but I would like to, I'd like to unmute anybody that has anything they wanna ask about, anything they'd like to share regarding things they've done during meal times that have been really successful. Um, Cause I, I just feel like this is how we all learn. So we're gonna give it a whirl. So if you'd like to share an idea, just raise your hand and, and we'll try to unmute you. And the way you raise your hand is that little box in the top right hand corner, you see a hand with the, with the little green arrow. So, and I have to scroll through. We have, gosh, a lot of people. So I have to scroll up and down. And when I see your hand raise, then I will try to unmute you so you can ask a question if you so desire. So it takes me, we have about 150 people on here. So it's going to take me <laughs> just a minute to scroll up and down. Um, if you don't want to ask a question, that's okay too. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, we just wanted to open it up and, and see if there's anybody who had anything they'd like to share or um, any questions that they had. And so I have not all the hand or raise. I don't have any hand raised, but I have a couple of question marks. Let's see. All right, now I eliminated those. Now try to raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. I don't see any hand. Everybody's shy. I think they just don't want to talk out in public or something. It's getting too late. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I'm going to, if I'm reading this right, I have some, the problem is when you answered in that question box, I think you already have a question there. But if you want to talk and me unmute you, you have to click that little hand, um, little hand icon in the top right hand corner. I'm going to check that and make sure that I'm telling you correctly. I'd, Yep, that works. So we don't have any hands raised. <laughs> okay. All right, oh, wait, great. Wait. We got one. We got one. Christine okay. Coleman. Okay. Okay, Christine. Okay, give me just a minute to unmute you. Okay, Chris, Christine. Oh, it's not showing green. Oh, wait a minute. I think we just got her and I took it off. Hold on. All right, Christine. Christine Coleman, do you have a question? Can you hear us? Uh, okay, you're unmuted, but I don't hear you. So we tried. <laughs> Let me just scroll down and see if I see another one. But one second. Yeah, sometimes I don't know what it is. Sometimes with even myself, when I log into this, it automatically mutes me and I have to unmute myself at the top. Um, there's a little microphone and it needs oh, to be green, okay. not red. So, um, all right, Denise Allen. So I'm unmuting you, Denise, and I don't know if you need to go, if you need to unmute yourself. Denise? Yeah. There oh, you are. Yeah, there you are. We hear you. Okay. I had a question. You know, you sit the kids down to eat and you're trying to get busy and serve stuff. And, you know, right off of that, you serve something like beets and then all the one kid goes, yuck. So then all the other kids go, yeah, you yeah. know, and mm -hmm. I'm like, away from that with, you know, do you just start telling them you, you know, we're not going to say that you can't say that. 
That's tough because I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and I know my children have done that to me too, and it's very frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where you, 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 uh, well, for me, I would always just say, you know, everybody likes and dislikes different things and it's okay if you don't particularly like beef, but you know what? Some other people might really like that beef. I mean, you don't want to make them feel bad for expressing their feelings, but if it does get to be an issue where they're doing it every single meal time, then it seems like that might be a time to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about like, okay, you can have your likes and dislikes, but you're being a little too, I don't know, disruptive to the group when you do that. Cause I know they, they model what they hear, right? You know, and one person says it and then they all say it. Totally yeah. got their like not liking things because they don't like them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, it, it maybe, maybe you have a, um, a time when you sit down with them and talk about like before you plan out meals for the week, right? Like what are the things you really like? What are the things you really don't like? And, and just kind of frame it around how we all have different likes and different dislikes and give them a time that's not meal time to talk about that. So maybe if they get it a time to talk about it when it's not meal time, then when the meal time comes around, it won't be as big of a deal if that makes any sense. I mean, that's tough because I've been down that road. I know how that is, even with my own children. Um, and, and it is really hard because you don't want to tell them it's not okay not to like it. But then some of them, I think, they just say that because they just want to get things going. I guess I don't know. <laughs> well, and I think it's important, too, to stress um, the positive attitude and to say whatever you're going to say, it needs to have a positive approach and a smile on your face. And when you say yuck, it's really hard to have a big smile on your face. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. know. I mean, that that's one thing I always stress to my kids. You know, it's like, okay, we can say whatever. You just got to be positive. You know, leave those negative comments back over in the corner. Yeah, yeah. It it is a hard. It is a very hard. When I'm sure those of you who are out there listening have had that happen to you. Um, if anybody has any ideas on how to handle a situation like that, I mean, I'm sure that uh, we would love to hear them. Yeah. Uh, so feel free to either type your ideas in the question box or you can raise your hand and we can unmute you. Uh, you know, the it is hard, right, to to get them past that. Does that, yeah. does well, that child do that a lot? Does it, does yes. it happen? Hmm. Okay, so it's yeah. a behavior then that they've learned. I wonder if they do it at home. It'd be interesting to know. Yeah, because I had his oldest sister and she's a real picky eater. Ah, okay. Sometimes you got to reinforce when they say positive things about the food that they like, and that's yeah. that's hard to, you know. Yeah, that was the other thing I was gonna say is that you know if you have children who are the opposite of that, who are you know willing to try new things, and you can reinforce their behavior without making it seem like you're praising them, quote unquote, you know, just like, yeah. oh, wow, I really like how you took a bite of that, even though you weren't quite sure you were going to like it. And I'm glad yeah. you liked it. Or it's OK if you don't like it. You know what I mean? Like maybe just that reinforcement will be enough to change this, help this child realize that it's a better way. Um, yeah. Sometimes yeah. when they get stuck in that in that behavior role, especially if that's what yeah. they're doing at home, too, it's really yeah. hard for you to break the habit if it's also happening at home. It becomes a habit, right? Which I think yeah. is, you know. But thank you. That was a very good question. Yes, I'm thank put you. you. Put you back on mute. I've got another hand raised. Um, one second here. This is great. I'm hoping that this continues to work. <laughs> okay, Cheryl Moss. Um, we've unmuted. You may have to click something, Cheryl. Cheryl. Can you? Cheryl. Yes. Can you hear me? We I can, can hear you, Cheryl. That's great. <laughs> okay. No, I was just saying that we have a garden. We garden with our kids. Oh, wonderful. From, from start to finish. They they help plant in the spring inside and then take it out in May. and thing. But anyhow, they get a chance to pick it and try it fresh. And we cook what they pick. Mm-hmm the garden for sometimes for lunch day for that day mm -hmm. there have been times when kids have said well can we just eat it this way you know for lunch <laughs> yeah. and they didn't want you to cook it they just wanted right. it fresh right you know um it, it and for the young lady who said something about the the child always 
interjecting or saying that they didn't like or yuck and everything like that. Um, I would have try having them just um, tell them, describe to them how it tastes, maybe, or give me a word that of something that you like on your plate. Describe how it tastes. You know, it might be, and and you might start off and say, you know what, I like. The oranges taste scrump delicious. <laughs> you know? and, and so you've changed the atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So now the attention isn't being brought on something yuck because now somebody else is going to try to even make up a silly word or something. Oh, like that's, that that's a great food. idea. Yeah, that's, it is. That's, that's great. And I love the gardening. Like, I think that is so amazing because the children then learn where their food comes from. They also yes. learn how much time and energy it takes to grow food. And you're absolutely right. Like when I grew up in central PA, um, my dad had a huge garden. And one of my favorite things to do was pull carrots out of the garden and barely rinse them off. I think I ate more dirt than carrot. But they always tasted so good that way. And also you can get children to try things that otherwise they might not try because they had a hand in growing them. So and right. I was going to say, if they have a hand in that, there's pro they're going to try it. That's yeah, a they great are. idea, though. Because they have taken ownership and pride yeah. of what yeah. they have done. And, and they my, should. My, my thing is try your age. That's what I would get them to do. Try their age. And I had a child that came that mom said, do you want us to bring your own food? And I said, for what? She said, because he's a picky eater. I said, he'll learn how to eat here. No, uh, <laughs> we're not going to bring, you know, you're not bringing any food in here. I'm very particular about what I fix for these kids and I will make sure that he likes it. So for him, and he was like maybe four years old, I would, I needed a small success for him. So I may have only put two green beans on the plate. Right, right. Instead of four, okay, mm -hmm. or, or six, you know, and let him try those and then praise him for those two that he ate. Because mm -hmm. then I would tell him, I said, well, let me know how it tastes. Give me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, he would eventually give me a thumbs up. And, and but or the another thing that I have done is like in trying their age. They said, "Well, look, look, Miss Moss, we ate. Um, I ate, you know, two helpings of the beans." I say, "Oh, I didn't see you. Will you do it for me? Let me <laughs> do it this time." So therefore, they're doing two more. One of the other staff comes and they say, "Look, I ate some green beans," and they say, "I didn't see it. Let me eat it." Okay, next thing, they're all, it's all gone. Okay. Right. Yeah. right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I really appreciate you sharing. Those were great, great ideas. That's Thank great, you so, yeah. so much. I'm going to mute you now. I've got one more hand raised. One second. I'm so glad to hear you guys participate and, and join. One second. Let me scroll down. I know I saw it. Uh, Rebecca. Okay. Rebecca. Yes, I have a question. Hey, Perfect. Rebecca. Hi, how are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good. I just have a quick question. We have a picky eater in our facility, and the problem is their parents don't speak at any English. Oh, gee. Oh, so wow. um, what we we try to do is we, when we serve her lunch, we'll put it in front of her, in front of her, like the, the meat, the, you know, the vegetables and the fruit, and she'll mm -hmm. just throw the plate. Oh, she doesn't even want to try anything. So I just don't know how to get her to eat because I don't want her to starve. I mean, in the morning, she likes cereal. She likes mm -hmm. Cheerios, but I can't give her Cheerios the, the, all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does, she, ask, does she speak any um, English? She speaks li a little English, but she doesn't. Um, her main one is, I don't, it's like African or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I just, I don't know what to do. Um, well, if you can find out what language the family is speaking, Google Translate can be your best friend because then okay. at least you could maybe communicate with the family about the types of foods that she enjoys eating at home. Okay. Um, because it may be such a, a different cultural, and I don't know how long they've been in this country or if they, you know, 
she may be accustomed to eating very, very different foods. And so when you put the food in front of her, it may be so foreign to her that mm -hmm. she doesn't even know how to react to it. Okay. Um, but Google Translate is great because you can just type in in English what you want to ask or want to say, and then you pick the language on the other side, and it'll automatically translate it to that language. It might not be perfect, but it would be good enough that you would at least get, you know, some answer back. And okay. then they could type you an email back in their language, which you could block and copy, put in Google Translate and translate it back to English. So it would be a way for you to communicate back and forth because my guess would be part of it is fear. She's probably okay. like looking at this food going, I have no idea what this is. And I, you know, and, and, and because she didn't speak a lot of English either, she can't communicate those feelings. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could find out what they eat at home, it might be that maybe you serve something similar, right? Like maybe they eat beans that are a different type of bean than you normally serve, but you could serve those to everybody and just, you know, open the door for a new food. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But my guess is she's probably scared. I mean, okay. I, I, especially if she's relatively new to, you know, the mm -hmm. culture of the United States. There's I mean, she was, she was born here, but I, mm -hmm. her, I don't know how long her parents have been yeah and then you and then we did have a teacher who spoke her language but she's mm -hmm. on maternity leave uh, uh, so, so um, a couple yeah. of other a couple of other providers have suggested some stuff that it might not look the same as her so she doesn't know what she's exactly. eating in other mm -hmm. words the presentation may may be different um yeah. and then Another suggestion from another provider was, does their cultural culture eat everything from bowls versus yes. plates? Because the presentation may be different because yes. they're used to the bowls instead of a mm -hmm. plate. So, right, and, 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 and in some cultures in Africa, you eat with your hands. Like Ethiopian, if you go for Ethiopian, that, that, that's how they eat. You know, that it's, it, that's the way it's served. So it would be really important to find out, like, what their culture is, I think, and then maybe use some Google Translate to try to get some ideas of the mm -hmm. types of foods they eat at home. Because even if you don't know what the food is, you can look it up on Google and at least get some idea. And like Sherry said, or like a provider said, maybe it's just presentation, maybe putting it in yeah. a bowl as opposed to a plate and letting her eat it with her fingers is more what she's used to okay yeah. all right well, thank you that, so much thank That's you good luck. suggestion i mean i think we all learn from each other which is a absolutely absolutely all right um let me mute and just go down and look real quick it won't take but a minute i hope let's see bear with me monica monica jackson all right hold on or Monique, I'm sorry, Monique, 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 I just unmuted. You may have to unmute yourself, Monique. Oh, there you, you go. Hear me? Yes, hey, Monique. we can hear you. We can hear you. Hi. So Hi. I'm a family. I'm a. Uh, I have a group inside my home. So me and my kids. Um, I usually have lunch with them, mm -hmm. and um. We said grace, and then um, I have everybody name like something on a plate that we're having for lunch, mm -hmm. you know, like to see if they know what it is. And I try it with them, and it seems to like work, like to introduce mm -hmm. it like to mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. I have lunch with them, you know, daily, like you know, just so everybody feels, you know. And um, it seems to work whenever we um have lunch, and they see me like trying it with them, like trying the food with them. Mm -hmm. Well, you're you're modeling a positive behavior of trying it, right? And 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 you may try something and go, hmm. If I made this the next time, I would do something different. I would add more of this. I do that all the time, right? And that helps children see that it's okay, right? You might you might make it yourself and think it needs to be modified. But I think you sitting with them and modeling that behavior is is great because then they see, you know, hey, it, it's good to try new things, right? Yeah, because well, a lot like, of the kids are, like, very picky, so I, you know what I mean, like, let them see me eating lunch with them, and, you know, 
I, I think role modeling is so important. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Well, I think that's a great way to go. I mean, and, and, and sitting and eating with the children, like I said, it opens the door to so much conversation too. So when you try it, you say, well, I really like this. What do you think about it? And they may say, well, I don't really like it. And well, why don't you really like it? Or what do you really like about it? All those things are, it's great for opening that door back and forth of conversation. Great, right. thanks, Monique. Yeah. Thank you, Monique. I am going to mute you now. Okay, let me just scan one more time. Sorry, it is quite a long list. Okay, I think we've got everyone that had their hand raised. Okay. Um, which is great. Thank you, guys, so much for participating. Okay, give me right. one second. Let me close this out, and I'm going right. to go to our website now. So, um, Bob, can I share one thing? By the way, some of the concerns and questions that you had, other people were making comments, and I couldn't read them all, but um, hopefully we can share that later. In other words, there were ideas about when the child said yuck, um, mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll share some of those comments with you. Yeah, Sherry, if you, if you, can you see them now or are they too far buried in the, the uh, chat? Hang on, hold on one second. So hold for all of second. you out there on the webinar, Sherry has this, imagine a massive Excel sheet almost that has everybody typing everything that she has to scroll through to find the responses. So it takes a few minutes. <laughs> um, let's see. I tell them it hurts my feelings when they don't try it and I work so hard on it for them. We also have everyone try a bite at the same time if something new or mainly different. Um, okay, I can say, I just say candy is yuck and kids typically <laughs> laugh and it distracts <laughs> the yuck. Um, that I, remind, would. I remind them that we won't say anything if we don't like something. They just leave it on the plate. Um, Yuck, yummy, you cool kids. Yuck equals yummy, you cool kid. <laughs> um, I always tell the children I don't always make everything they like, but some of the other kids like it. Can you please try one? Um, no, thank you, bite. That's cute. Um, I say be brave and try something new, and then I make a big deal about them and try it to, if they try it out. Okay, those are just good comments that, you know, when y'all were coming in and talking about it that, you know, and they love the garden idea. Everybody loves that, so, all right. Well, and I think the point is here, and, and I really appreciate everybody sharing and asking questions because Sherry is absolutely right. That's how we all learn. Um, and we all also learn we face the same struggles. We, we've we all had a child that has done something similar and learning how to handle that and having ideas on how to handle that is super, super helpful. Um, but what I've done right now is I've gone to our website. And the reason that I've gone to our website is I need to show you where the handouts are that we have up right now. I also need to show you where the post assessment link is going to be. It is not live right now or active now. It will not be activated until after the webinar ends. So as soon as we end the webinar, you give me five minutes, I will go out and activate the um, the link to the post assessment and then you'll be able to complete it. And I'll explain how that's going to work. But what I'm at is I'm at gwizeducation.com. This is our website. Um, if you're not familiar with GWIS, we have a lot of information under this about the curriculum, including our catalog, our yearly outline, a sample lesson plan. There's also a ton of free resources. I am not logged in right now. Um, anything that I see or anything that you see is available to anyone. So if you're looking for resources for yourself, like developmental checklists um, or health and nutrition, we don't have any seasonal and holiday up now, but we will be putting Valentine's Day up um, when we get into February. We have resources for families. Um, this is a whole book about the learning environment. Anyway, bottom line is this is all free. It's not something you need to be a customer to access. So anybody on this webinar, if you would like to access or, or utilize any of this, you are more than welcome to. Um, I would encourage you to scroll down to the bottom of our homepage. If you're not a customer, 
You can sign up for our newsletter, and the reason that's important is you will be the first to know when we do our next webinars. You'll be the first to know, for instance, when we post those Valentine's Day activities. Um, and it's just in the purple section, if you scroll down on this homepage, you'll find where you sign up for the newsletter. And believe me, we don't spam. I'm lucky if I can remember to get one email out a week. <laughs> I get so busy. Um, so anyway, under the training and support tab is where you're all going to want to go to get to the post of seven. Uh, post assessment and you're going to click on webinar training and then you're going to just simply scroll down and here we are right here mealtime is learning time here was the note taking document and here it says link to assessment and certificate that's where you're going to click if I click there right now it'll say this is not an active uh, active form it's a Google form it's going to say it's not active because I haven't turned it on yet I will turn it on after we end um, there's also as a handout and it will be posted here also a coupon for those of you who are not customers if you choose to join GWiz you want to subscribe to our curriculum that saves you some money that is a handout that's up right now during the webinar and we'll put it here too um, it's only good until Sunday so if you want to take advantage of it now's the time it's also a great time to take advantage of it because instead of two units up on our website we actually have four right now um, and you can see exactly what those four are if you go to our yearly outline um, but this is where you're going to get the, the, the link to the assessment so what you're going to do is you're going to answer all the questions and then you're going to hit submit and you can do the assessment as many times as you want I'm, I'm not looking at your score or your grade as much as i am did you complete it um, with at least some proficiency anyway you're going to answer the questions they're very simple uh, at the <laughs> bottom there's going to be a green button like this it says submit when you click that pay close attention a message is going to pop up that says, thank you so much for submitting your post-assessment. Here is the link to the certificate of attendance. You will block and copy that link and put it up here in a new window, and that will allow you to print the certificate. If you have problems with that, if you can't find it, if it doesn't work, send an email to customer service at gwizeducation.com and we'll help you. Now, if you're in Pennsylvania, and you're part of the PD registry and you registered for this event in the registry, you must complete the post assessment for me to give you credit in the registry. I will have to go in and view your assessment, make sure you did it, make sure you attended the webinar, and then I can go in and give you credit. So in other words, just give me some time to get that taken care of because it does take me time to go back and forth between the different doc areas and get it all aligned um, but I will get to it and if I don't for some reason um, just shoot me shoot me an email at b smith b is in boy smith at gwizeducation.com if you are in Pennsylvania you did not register for this event in the registry but you're on this webinar right now and you're going to do the post assessment send me an email and tell me your PD registry number and I can add you in as an attendee Okay, so if you didn't register already in the PD registry, then just shoot me an email. Again, my email is b as in boy, smith at gwizeducation.com. If you are a quality specialist, trainer, and you want a copy of the actual PowerPoint to utilize um, with your providers, send me an email and ask me to send it to you, and I'll be happy to do that. Okay, so again, you're going to go to our website, gwizeducation.com. You're going to go under the webinar training tab. You're going to scroll down and you're going to click right here where it says link to assessment certificate link. Like I said, you have to give me five minutes once we finish because I got to go out and activate it. Okay. Anybody have questions? I will share with you the uh, PowerPoint presentation will be posted after this webinar is, is concluded. So the PowerPoint that Beth used during the presentation, it's not up there now, but it will add that. Yeah, um, it'll be a PDF of all the slides. So yeah. you can choose yeah. to print it out like one slide per page or in your print mode when you go to print, you can print it, you know, full slide, two per page, three per page, whatever you want. Um, but you have to choose that when you go to print. Yeah, so 16 pages, you might want to print several pages up. So the coupon and the PowerPoint will be 
um, put up after the webinar is over with, along with the activation of the um, post assessment. And there was a question like, where do we get that certificate? And are the uh, where is the assessment? And the assessment again is right there under the webinar training. You scroll down, and where Beth showed you, and that will change. Um, we'll change that little verbiage, and it will be activated um, later tonight. So, uh, and so someone just asked for the email ad uh, email address again. For I me, guess. I think um, so, Beth. Okay, so for me, it is B is in boy, B Smith at gwizeducation.com. Yeah, or you can always go to customer service at gwizeducation.com or smayberry at gwizeducation.com. Okay. And, and for those of you who are on the webinar tonight, um, we have a lot of other recorded webinars that you are more than welcome to watch. Um, if you just scroll down, they're all right on this page. So um, we keep adding to this and we do have a YouTube channel where we post things as well, but um, they're all right here. So if you if you really like this one and you want to do some more, then that's where they would be. Beth, there's one a question again. Please review again the Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, okay. Pennsylvania, if you registered for this event in the PD registry and you are on this webinar right now, all you need to do is do the post assessment where I showed you how to get to it like everybody else. If you're on this webinar right now, but you did not register in the PD registry, then you need to send me, bsmith at gwizeducation.com, an email that says, hey, I attended the webinar, I did the post assessment, but I did not register ahead of time in the PD registry. I can add you in as an attendee. Okay, but I will need your PD registry number when you send that to me. So you just need to tell me I attended the webinar, or the title of the webinar, your PD registry, and then I will verify that you did in fact, you were on, because I will get a report of everybody on this webinar. I will also get a report, a spreadsheet of all your post assessments, so I'll be able to make sure that you've done everything you need to do. Um, okay, and then there's a question, is the, is the state recognized? Every state is different. So you might be in North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, or Indiana, Kansas. Your certificate is what we can provide for you once you complete that post assessment. Um, the PD registry is just a little bit different. Yeah, it's in Pennsylvania. Um, we're also in the registry in Nebraska. Uh, there are other states that we're looking into getting into their registry, but as of now, we are not in their registry. That does not necessarily mean that they won't allow you to have credit for attending this. So that's why it's a good idea to do the certificate, have it on hand, and yep. then you can yep. just, you know, show, show it to your quality specialist. And I'm going to remind everyone that this webinar will be recorded. So hopefully sometime tomorrow where it says the little button, Beth, where it says show register, that will say watch. And so that will be the recording. So you'll have two more little check marks on or added. And then where it says register, it'll say watch the um, video. Um, pretty much anything that you missed tonight is right there where Beth's showing you. Uh, where you sign up for the post assessment, you do the certificate, everything is right there. <laughs> so um, anyway, I think that's, let's see. Um, if you do any, if you do any other of your classes, can you still get PD register credit in Pittsburgh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, that it, that is possible. Um, what you need to do is if you do, let's say you want to do some of the majority of these here um, are in the PD registry, sorry, uh, are in the PD registry. However, um, like choosing and using GWIZ is not because it's specific to the curriculum, but like no money, no problem would be. And so what you can do is if you do this, let's say you watch the watch the webinar, you do the post assessment, then you would again need to send me an email at bsmith at gwizeducation.com and you would need to tell me, hey, I watched No Money, No Problem. I did the post assessment. Can you give me credit in the registry? My name is X. My PD registry number is Y. And, and just send that information to me. Because what I have to do is I have to go in and add you as an attendee to that 
registration. So um, I can do it. That's just the information I would need. Now, there's a, like anything specific to GWiz, like choosing and using GWiz, all about GWiz, intro to GWiz. You can certainly watch them all, but they can't be in the registry. They will not allow us to do that type of curriculum specific training for credit in the registry. There's a question. Do they have a certain number of days that they have to complete the registry? Beth? Uh, to complete the, reg the, the post assessment? No. Um, okay. How many days do we have to complete the register? And I'm assuming we're talking about, hold on, I'll tell you what state, but um, I'm assuming we're talking about Pennsylvania. But the post assessment can be done anytime, whenever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what will happen with the post assessment and the, and the registry, and this is true of anybody, um, if you want credit in the registry, uh, it's it's really not dependent upon, like you don't have to do it right now. You can do the post assessment tomorrow if you wanted to. I will go in there and, view, and, and review that spreadsheet you know, over many days. Um, and if by chance I miss you and you were on the webinar and you're in the registry, like, hey, I don't see my credit showing up, just send me an email. Just give me at least, you know, a couple days to get through everybody because it does take some time. But there's no real time limit. If you have questions after this webinar is over with, again, you can send the questions to either customer service at gwizeducation.com or B. Smith at gwhizeducation.com, and you got to type it out, gwhizeducation.com, or S. Mayberry at gwhizeducation.com. Either one of those three emails, we'll get back to you as soon as we can um, if you have questions after the webinar is over with. But I do want to thank you all. We had great attendance tonight. It's been um, quite an interactive audience, and I think you guys have done a great thing. Um, great participation. I appreciate it, and thank you. Yeah, and I hope that you walk away that tomorrow when you're serving that first meal, you're thinking about, okay, what can I reinforce here? What developmental areas can we, can I integrate into this meal time? Because that's the goal, right? The goal of anything is to walk away with skills you can put into practice. So, so hopefully that happened for you tonight. And um, like I said, just give me a few minutes to activate the post assessment. I will um, go out and I will do that as soon as we finish the webinar. Again, I'm on the webinar training page and you just go right here to the link to assessment and certificate. That's it. Um, if you click it now, it's not going to work, but if you give me five minutes, it will work. And I know you're all tired. It's 830 here on the East Coast and, um, and I know I'm tired, but thank you again so much everyone for attending. You know how to send questions. Um, and with that, we're going to say good night. Beth? Good night, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Good night.